So this is Catherine. Catherine's presenting today for removal of a lesion that's been on her scalp for a number of years. You can appreciate that this is swollen up through this area. Um, Matthew is the resident who's helping us. So Matthew, do you remember what kind of cyst this is? Pilar cyst. Yeah, so this is a pilar cyst. The big differentiation here, these used to be called sebaceous cysts, which is a bit of a misnomer. If you see them on the open tissue, they're usually epidermoid cysts because they're derived from epidermal tissue. Pilar cysts are derived from the base of the hair follicle, which is called the pilar cell, and this is why they're called pilar cysts. So the only challenge we'll have here, this is a, again an uninfected field, um, so we shouldn't have any trouble from the standpoint of anesthesia and having good anesthesia. So Catherine, can you feel that at all? No. No pain there whatsoever. So in this case, we've put in some 2% uh, xylocaine. Um, do you remember the toxic dose of xylocaine by chance? Uh, five milligrams with epi seven. Yeah, so it's five milligrams per kilogram, seven milligrams per kilogram when you had epinephrine in. Do you remember why epinephrine is higher? Uh, because it constricts the vessels, which means it's... it's yes, so there's two the reasons. Field. The main reason is you're constricting the uptake, so it doesn't deliver as much. The other reason being it's antagonizing, which is the, the um, toxic effect of lidocaine, which is a cardiac suppressant, so we don't see that as much. So, And that's really a lot if you, we weigh it out. So this has already been, we've put some, so initially, we add some anesthetic underneath the cyst, and then we added some along the track through here. So now what we're going to be doing is... We're just going to be opening up very superficially and then doing some blunt dissection and seeing whether we can extract the cyst out. If the cyst capsule ruptures, it's not a big issue. We can always just evacuate the contents and get it out. It's just a little bit cleaner sometimes if we can do it while maintaining the capsule intact. So from the choice of a blade, um, this is a, a number 15 blade which I'll use. And all I tell you here is again, as long as you go slowly, um, that's the biggest issue. So Catherine, you'll feel some pressure, but you shouldn't feel any real pain. Mm -hmm. If you feel anything, let me know. And I spoke to Matthew ahead of time. Um, the key with this one is again, because it's laying right at the surface, is just to take your time and then it'll open up. So these are curved Crileys. So I use them just to see if I can open that up a little bit. And if I can, it's no big deal. I just go back and I'll add one little line so don't be frustrated with it you won't tear the tissue or anything like that but this because it lies superficial I want to just do it very slowly so you can tell here it's not opening so I just need to add a little bit more pressure with it so just pick my number 11 blade up again I'll just add a little bit and just very slowly Now the other thing I sometimes do is if it's, if it's under a lot of pressure, you can elect to just pick an area just off to the side of it, just so that you can maintain the capsule. You can see here, Matt, can you appreciate that? Yep. Pardon? I'm just talking to the resident counselor. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you, you ask any questions you want. So you can, yeah. you can see that that's the capsule surface that's there. So the nice thing is we're into that layer. So all I do is I extend that out a little bit. And the nice thing I find that that allows me to do is now, what I'll do from this end is, I'll put the Crileys back in from the posterior aspect. And then I can extend this. while protecting the cyst capsule. So, and the nice thing is the cyst capsule is really pretty resistant. So, what I want to do here is break down some of the adhesions. So you see there, that's the capsules rupturing a little bit. So what I want to be doing, even with that rupture, I want to put this in and rotate it so that I break down the adhesions behind the capsule. Now in this case, because the cyst is broken a bit, you're going to get some drainage. And if the capsule breaks down on us completely, we won't be able to rotate behind it. It's just going to break down. Does that hurt? Bump back out. So what I'll do with that is I'm just going to add in a little extra anesthetic. Any pain on this side at all? Pardon? That doesn't hurt when I'm doing that? No. Just on the one, like the, the one front spot. Part. Yeah, okay. 
This spot doesn't hurt at all. Nope. Okay. So the other thing you'll notice too is scalp, regrettably, can it can ooze quite a bit. That's just the nature of it. You okay? Yeah. You see that that cyst just is popping out here. So I'm just putting some extra pressure behind it. So you can see this is all, that's long standing sebum that's communicated a little bit to the surface, so it's oxidized a little bit. Kind of clean that up a little bit. That doesn't hurt? No. See that capsule is popping right out. There we go. And that capsule is completely out there. So we just pop that into the uh, and send that off. And now we just need to clean the rest of this field out. Ah, so there's still the residual cysts there. So this is the what you're seeing is the capsules have evacuated itself into the space that's been left behind. So all I want to do is make sure that there's no residual cyst tissue that's there. And sometimes you'll get, even at this stage, even though it wasn't infected, you'll see in, in infected fields that you can get loculated cysts. And the same thing from this perspective, so I want to make sure there's nothing else that's there. So the other thing that I'll do in this particular case, um, because she's had a rupture into the actual space, I want to clean out the space a little bit uh, before I actually uh, sew this back up. So what I'll do, Matthew, is I'm going to just drop a syringe of um, some uh, normal saline or some uh, sterile water. Just irrigate? And we'll just irrigate, yeah. And this again, so when residents are doing this, it'll feel like this is just bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. Um, this isn't a lot, and it, it gets in the way of your field a lot, but this will settle nicely once we put the sutures in. And if we were really worried about it, we could just clamp it, and you could suture it then, but I'm not overly worried about that at this stage of the game. Catherine, you're feeling fine? Yeah. So all I'll be trying to look through here, just to make sure again that there's no capsule, because there's no actual remaining cysts that are there, and that all the, the area is cleaned out and there's no leftover keratin. It looks relatively clean at this stage of the game, so we just use a little bit of syringe, and this can be a bit messy, but just irrigate that a little bit. Drop another one for me, please. Mm -hmm. Irrigate that again. Thanks, it's okay. Let's just do one more. And then one last time. So this is something I usually do for the infected fields. I'm just going to use a longer Q-tip just to help clean that out. And all I'm looking for here, I'm content that the entire capsule is open. I'm just making sure we're not leaving behind any 
loose keratin because it evacuated itself into the capsule, into the space, sorry. You can just see some residual keratin that's there. And keratin's not infected, so this is, sometimes that can be difficult to appreciate when you see these type of videos. Um, so it's not like it's gonna create an infection that's left behind, but it's just, from a healing perspective, it'll be a bit nicer if we can clean that out a little bit. Catherine, you're still feeling fine? Yep. Good. So you can see here what we're getting into. This is this is capsule here. So this is a, a secondary capsule that's behind. So when that first one came out nicely, behind that, there's another capsule that we're taking out now. So we want to make sure we make the effort to get that out. So if we don't get this out, then she's just going to have a recurrence. So hers was a truly loculated, or, or two separate cysts. You can see that that's all capsule. It's there, you can appreciate that. Yeah. Catherine, you feeling fine? Yep. I'm just thinking about what my friend said. Told me that maybe the doctor can check your brain at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> no, your brain is fine. Yeah. <laughs> This is just the posterior end of it. You can see that's the back end of the cyst. So I'm just going to see if I can open this up a little bit. Residual capsule that might be there. And just grab me maybe two, three more of those uh, long Q tips. Maybe. Sure. So this is just where, you know, taking the extra time to not only find the second cyst, but just to make sure that everything is all clear. And clean and it'll heal a little bit better. So all I'm looking for now is just to make sure that I'm not getting loads of keratin or, or uh, a significant pocket that's there that indicates there's some cyst wall that's still remaining. So the tops, and I can feel that with the Q-tip, the top's entirely clear, just at the bottom here. I feel like there's just some residual keratin that's there, so I'll make sure that that's clean. Bottom feels clear. So, now what we'll have to do is just suture this closed. Just using some fluoroproline. I'm just gonna trim off that one spot there. And then we'll have to clean up her hair and make sure that that's all done properly too. So just give this one second. And you can, so sometimes in some fields, patients don't mind so much and you can choose to shave some of the hair out. Um, it's not a big issue, it just interferes a little bit with suturing. But other than that, it shouldn't be a problem and we'll have to extract the hair out of the solution. So you see it, and this is why surface sutures are a different color, because if you're in, they choose blue, so that you can recognize them when you come back out to take them out. So this should lay flat for us, just like that. And 
you'll see it'll catch the hair there, so we'll have to pull that back out in a minute. I usually use, leave about half a centimeter here so it's not so difficult to localize these when you try and find them in the seven days. And you see what I mean even after just one suture, now it's the bleeding that you're so worried about before is settled down. So the other thing I tell you too is, uh, this is just for the uh, resident Catherine, um, the scalp can bleed quite a bit as we saw, this actually wasn't too bad, but you'll oftentimes want to uh, put a pressure dressing on these, so even when we stop the bleeding it can ooze a lot, so we'll oftentimes you know, put a little bit of a turban on them as they head out of the office just so that we make sure that that's clear.